So we've been learning um, about how to walk in the Spirit, how to maintain the flow of the Spirit of God that is, is that uh, we continually have access to as believers to tap in to the flow of the river of the water of life uh, that can and will flow through us as we yield ourselves to uh, studying God's word and meditating on the spirit of God, meditating on the word of God uh, <clears throat> in prayer, in worship, spending time <clears throat> just worshiping, worshiping the Lord like this. You know, we, we enter in to this place of the flow. And Jesus said, we read um, in our previous video in John 6, 63, he says, the, wor the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And so, you know, if we are lacking in spirit and we are lacking in life, then we know exactly where we need to go as children of God and as believers, and that is to the Word of God, because as just listening to the Word of God, sometimes I'll just put the Bible on tape and just put the Word of God on. I may be doing something else or be distracted with something else. I may be working or whatever it may be, but it's that vibration of the Word of God, the vibration of praise and worship, the vibration of the spoken Word. The, it, it all goes toward helping to maintain that aspect of awareness and of mindfulness of the Spirit of God. And that's how, you know, uh, I like an analogy that D Bill Johnson made one time in, a, in a, spirit, uh, a sermon that I heard recently by him. And he said, you know, the Holy Spirit is likened unto a dove. And the Bible tells us that, you know, the, the, the dove came and it lit on Jesus in bodily form, that it hovered on him. And, you know, if we are carrying and hosting that presence, that spirit, then, you know, it, it's like a dove that rests upon us. And if we are walking, if we were walking with a natural dove on our shoulder, we, you would be very careful. You would be very mindful of any sudden move that you might make or any, any loud noise or anything that would disturb that dove and cause it to fly away. And that's how it is in, excuse me, in walking in the spirit. And walking with God is that we are continually mindful. It is an exercise in, in, in continual mindfulness. And it is, a, it is like exercising a muscle. It's something that we grow in as Christians. As we grow in, uh, uh, as the Apostle Peter said, grow in grace. And grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we continually to, to walk with Him and and, and are mindful of staying in that flow. And, and sometimes, you know, if our mind goes out here and we have to, you know, be, do things and do our chores and take care of jobs and family and life responsibilities, and, and of course, but then we always come back then to this place of mindfulness and, 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 and always stop and check in. Maybe if you're at a red light or you're stopping for a moment, just check in with the Holy Spirit. Check in with what's going on on the inside. Check in and begin to offer praise and gratitude. And just for a moment, enter back in to the flow of the river of life that Jesus promised that every one of us could experience as believers. And so we're learning how to walk in that flow. And one of the ways that we have learned how to walk in that flow is through uh, staying in the Word, really studying and meditating and, and, and feeding, feasting, as it were, on the Word of God. And, and this, the, uh, Jesus said, He said, My words are spirit, they are life. And the word of God is spirit. It is life. It is quickening. It is power. It is revelation. It is freedom. It is understanding. It is illumination to the mind. Uh, David said in one place, he says that the, 
The law of the Lord is pure, making wise the simple. The law of the Lord is, is um, I think he said like honey, enlightening the eyes. I may not be quoting that exactly, but uh, uh, you, you understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> now I'm in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And uh, he says here, uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. I'm going to stop right there. All scripture. That means all of this Bible from Genesis to Revelation is the inspired word of God. It is uh, the inerrant and holy word of God. And he said it is, it is given by inspiration. And the word there we have in some translations, and it's very clear in the Greek, that the, the, the word of God is, it, it says that the, all scripture is God breathed. In other words, God breathes his breath of life through the pages of his holy word. Through the pages of the Bible, through the pages of the Word of God, we find that breath and that life and that inspiration coming to us. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that when he made man, that he formed him of the dust of the ground. And, and he formed him as a just, he was a lump of clay. And there was Adam. But it was not until the Bible says that God breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life, that his breath, the breath of God, caused man to become a living soul. And so when we go to the Word of God and when we study and when we memorize and when we look up scriptures and we listen to the spoken Word of God and we listen to anointed preaching of the word of God, <coughs> then we are receiving that divine breath that is flowing through the pages of the word of God. And he says here now, he says all scripture is given by inspiration of God <clears throat> or it is God breathed. He said, and is profitable for Doctrine. The first thing he says that scripture is profitable for is doctrine. <clears throat> now the word doctrine in Hebrew is lokach. And, and it means simply a, to be receptive. <clears throat> to be receptive of the word, uh, uh, of, of, the word of God. To, to take and to receive uh, is what this word means. And you see, doctrine... You know, the Christian world gets all confused about doctrine. And it's like everybody's got a pet doctrine. And is it, you know, is it seven year tribulation? Is it three and a half year tribulation? Is the rapture going to happen mid trib, pre trib, post trib, blah, 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 blah. That's, that, that's just silliness for us to, to argue over and, and, and divide the body of Christ. Let me tell you what, what, what is it? What? doctrine really is. Doctrine is understanding God's principles of operation. The principles of God's operation, that is what doctrine is. And I can give you a, a, a couple of principles that you will find all through the Word of God. They are simply God's principles of operation. Number one, you will find that, you know, all through the Word of God, you find redemption, through shed blood. You find it at the gates of the Garden of Eden. You find it in the story of Cain and Abel. You find it throughout the Old Testament tabernacle, throughout the story of Abraham, throughout all of the law and the prophets. There is always a continual theme of the redemption by the shed blood of a substitute. This is a theme that is a principle of operation. Another principle of operation of God is that there is always everything God does. He always starts with a seed before honor is humility. He always starts anything that God begins. If you know God's in it, he's going to start small. He always starts with the seed. He said in his word, despise not the day 
of small things. And so it is this, this, this doctrine, this principle of operation that God begins to share with us and open our eyes to as we go into all scripture, as we study and fill the furrows of our mind with the word of God. You see, the Bible says that in Psalms 103, verse 7, that Israel was acquainted with God's works, but to Moses, he showed him his ways or his doctrine, his principles of operation. God showed Moses the why and the reasoning and the way of the Lord behind the mighty works and that what was the the nature behind the mighty miracles that Israel saw and see when we go to the word of God it's it, God lets us in he takes us in and he lets us in on a secret and that secret he says come on in come on in a little closer and let me whisper in your ear and let me share with you my principles of operation. Let me show with you, share with you my nature. Let me tell you a little bit about who I am, not just about what I've done. So the, the word of God is crucial to understanding the doctrine or the principles of God's operation. And through that, the spirit, the life, the breath of God fills our temple and fills our tabernacle. And uh, that's how we walk in the spirit.